301 Maine. Let me just read the. Um, the, the meeting may be accessed remotely via the town's online, um, on, excuse me, demand video broadcast on cable television on channel uh, 191 or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1455, enter 1428-pound uh, uh, for the meeting number and 12345 for the access code. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website. As far as attendance is concerned, we have three live in the room and David Barnacle remote. David? Eric? Eric? Uh, present. Roy? Present. And Ed Goodwin. All right. Go from there. We're going to start with um, public hearings, which uh, 605, we are at 605. We are at 57 Karen Road, notice of intent. Um, Shoreline Wall. Um, Mr. Chair, do you want me to read Stephen's notes yeah. for the record? Yep. Pass that down. Stephen, this is a one time thing. Uh, in the interest of saving time, the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland, water body, or resource area and or within uh, the 200-foot buffer zone to a wetland, water body, or resource area. In accordance with the Mass Wetland Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and Associated Regulations and the Town of Sturbridge Wetland Bylaws and Associated Regulations. We will not be reading the newspaper ad. Prior to the opening, the first hearing for each project, the applicant is... Uh, uh, is to submit proof of notification to a butters within 200 feet of the subject property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do so. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have... A number for the yes, yeah. yep, it's three hundred dash eleven twenty one. Okay. And just for the record we have um proof of legal ad in the butter room. All right. Lenny, you're on. Good evening. Uh this is Lenny Jalbert from Jalbert Engineering is here representing the uh Casabons for their uh, property located at uh, uh let's see, uh fifty seven Cameron Road. What we're here tonight for is uh, a limited work effort on the site because there's a, there's a pending notice of intent and DEP file number that was submit, uh, submitted for the site and it's still pending. This this here is basically for for the work that is being done on the end of the uh, shoreline wall uh, and the shoreline wall only. Nothing that else to do with the property. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've taken and reissued the uh, drawing under uh, revision three, uh, basically relative to the town conservation comment. And that was done with, with the office uh, Pecky that uh, what we did is eliminated all the work that is being done on the original file number and just show the, the work that's being done on this file number. And what it is really is with the with the packet for the notice of intent, we were to have taken the shoreline wall, which is from here all the way across in here five feet, over down five feet to here, and repointing the wall itself. That's basically all of the work that's going to be done within that total area was uh, repointing the wall. The wall's not going to change. The uh, wall's not going to be uh, removed or enlarged. The only place that will take uh, any movement and change will be within the boathouse itself, which is right here, which is five feet into the boathouse and five feet over here on both the north and south uh, east corners of the uh, boathouse. Uh, you have pictures in the uh, notice of intent that shows the work that's being done right in here, which there was a washout with the stone here and a washout over here, which is going to be replaced. 
that's basically all that's going to be done. The uh, DEP alluded to the fact on, on getting the uh, notice of intent that the uh, chapter 91 of the uh, dock area that is here, uh, they, they, they don't know whether or not there was ever a permit issued for that. The, this area here was done before 1984, and um, it's pending now. Now, the thing is, if we have to go for a chapter 91, and, and the project could be upheld or held up because of it. Uh, what they would like to do is just remove the dock itself off the, off the plan and to be part of tonight's proposal. Any questions? Okay. Um, right, so DEP's comments, I think I provided those to you. Yeah. Um, DEP waterways uh, regulates any permanent structures, including um, new like shoreline walls, potentially, depending on what the scope of the work is. Um, so I'm not sure if they're just pertaining to the dock or, or not. Um, it might be towards wall work sometimes too, if there's not a um, permit in, in hand for the wall or not. So that is an ownership question and permitting that's required for them. They do ask that um, the commission um, you know, include sometimes conditions that you make sure you get those permits if needed for your work. Um, so that's something that can be included sometimes. So it, it might not just be pertaining to that existing dock. Um, so just, just a note on that. Okay. Um, as far as, right, it's uh, repointing just those sections of repair. And I was just kind of curious exactly how many linear feet of repair on the corners are. So you think it's like five on each side around each corner. So it's about 20 linear feet, maybe 10 on each side. You go, I think you have the picture in your deck. Yeah, I have the pictures too. Yeah. Basically, what you're talking maximum where the boathouse is, you're talking maybe 10 foot on the south side and 10 foot on the north side. Okay, perfect. Side. Yeah. Okay. I, I, just, I just wanted to know that because for the repointing where you're just adding like the mortar and the cracks, um, that wouldn't be something that we necessarily include in the permit. We have to um, add, you know, and include what the impact is to resource area for, for banks, big bank rated. Um, or modified, so we would just include that 20 feet. So um, I think Lenny went over this well. I included the scope of the, the work, um, the application, the photos for you. I did ask that he revise the plan, that DEP asked that as well, so it did include um, taking off the other things that were previously permitted and are ready to start work when they're ready to do that work. Um, so with having the 20 feet um, in this situation, you know, when we see um, replacements of a full shoreline wall come in. Typically, we'll look at what are the alternatives that um, are better suited for banks that maybe more naturalized things like that. Since you're only doing this repair, I don't think it's necessary to have to explore that alternative analysis process at this time. Um, and I would I would recommend that you have to. Um, therefore, I mean I would recommend um, approval of the project for the repair and the repointing. Um, and with that, you know, typically add our standard orders of um, conditions for um, pre-work, conditions during work, and um, any, any perpetual that might be necessary. Um, shoreline work to be performed in dry conditions, typically during breakdown. If that's not possible, then um, someone can develop a plan and submit that for approval um, to work around that if needed. Um, and then just to add in, um, not that I think it's a big concern here, but just that the toe of the repaired wall section conforms to the existing wall conditions. And we've, we've done this for new shoreline walls just to make sure that they don't, they don't bump out because then you're starting to do work on another resource area called land underwater. Um, and then just the as-built plans to demonstrate that um, that there's been no net fill and that the as-built elevations uh, to document compliance. And then you can just add a condition that if a Chapter 91 license is required, the applicant receives. Right, okay. Oh. Eric? Uh, the only question I have, Lenny, do you see, or to the applicant, do you see of any issue of this work not being done during dry conditions, during dr drawdown, or is that something we expect we're going to have to deal with? Uh, like, would it be delayed farther than while the lake's down, you mean? Well, I'm just curious if, if you're going to be able to have your contractor get in there while, uh, during the dry uh, s session. Yeah. This was, uh, I'll just, I guess I'll start by saying that this was kind of a surprise. We bought the house about a year ago when the yeah. lake was down and we knew the wall wasn't in great shape, but then 
you know, the summer with the wakeboard boats and everything, it came down again, and I was surprised. I sent the message over, like, I think this thing's going to crumble if we don't do something. Yeah. So I talked to two separate people, one uh, contractor that works specifically in foundation stuff like this around the waterways, and then a guy named Paul Benoit, who has done a lot of the work, I guess, on Cedar Lake. I think he's going to be the one we go with, and he's set to go. He just had shoulders. But that sounds like he's ready to go. Okay. And when, when do they start raising the levels back up, Ed? Do you know? It's all no. about how it's much a, rain we get at this yeah. point, I think. Yeah. You know? Okay. I think the dam has already been raised. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just... It's a question of how much fill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's the only question I had. Yeah. As long as we have a, a, an understanding that if we can't get it done during the dry, we're going to have to figure the, those other pieces out that Becky uh, pointed out, I'm good with the project. I'm good. The only question I'd have is there any recommended uh, improvements on the site? Yeah. Um, so we actually reviewed. Um, they're they're doing a lot of improvements on the site already. Mm -hmm. and we issued orders and conditions, I believe, it was last yeah. summer yeah. for their project. And with that, they took away. There's a lot of old cave walkways, cave swales, um, a lot of impervious areas that aren't needed on site. And they're already actually taking a lot of away. They have a lot of nice tree cover on the site that they want to keep. Um, so. We already kind of worked through that a little bit, so I do think, and I apologize because in my notes I did have a, um, I had a note in here that I think I just forgot to copy and paste it, and it went in about planting, so that wasn't meant. To okay. okay, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, we were about to get started, and then the building, you know, the building material just skyrocketed. So, all right, let's hold on, but we're looking to get started like this fall. The uh, question that I have, David. Can you see if we can get David? Get his comments and is he hearing us? Are you hearing us, David? Yes, I am. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Um about the dock. Have you got a picture of the dock there? Um, there might be one in there. Yeah. That's the dock, right? No, that's the that, no, that's, Oh yeah, yes, no, there is the dock, yep. Yeah. That yeah, there is the dock right there. Okay. The so, boathouse is just to the right of that, where, where you see that railing. Mm -hmm. that so that's, you got I-beams, one I-beam or more than one I-beam? There are three. Three I-beams going into the side of the hill, huh? I mean, I'd be happy to cut them all out, but I don't, <laughs> I think if we, <laughs> I'd be happy to get rid of them. <laughs> it, looks, it looks dangerous. Yeah, it looks um, the, the um, but, but you're interested in doing the wall repair, and, and when I go up there and take a look at it, I'm going to know that it's a repair, right? I'm not going to see a new wall with a different, you know. No, I mean I, we we talked about that, and yeah. with the two separate contractors, and they both said we should just repair it. That'll get you twenty. Yeah. How much of that? So, excuse me. It's if you, if you look, you might have a. I took another picture down below that shows you the crack. Oh yeah, here you go. Yeah. There, yeah. there, there's right there. So this is what it's called. What they're doing is they're actually going to be repointing all these cracks in the wall. All right. The that's all that's going to be done. Nothing's going to be removed, other than just pointing the. The water's going to be coming up. The water's going to be up. Um, it's going to be a problem if you. Um, I, I think we have to not do it uh, when it's wet, when the, when the walls are. If they can do it from a dry position and point it like if you could. I don't know how steep. That's pretty steep. Uh, it's not that steep. It really isn't. You see them there. It's, I mean, I walked. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I don't know, Lenny. I, I don't think you and I could do it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's my only concern. I don't have any problem with having a separate, um, you know, agreement to go ahead and point the wall. And I and as far as the boathouse is concerned, you know, I think that that's fine too. Turn to. Fix those corners, and and 
to assuage your concerns a little bit at it, the quote that they got from one of the contractors, Ramjack. This definitely, this is definitely not a new wall. It's definitely a repair. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, good. The second yeah. quote we got was way lower than that one. Well, <laughs> good. <laughs> Yep. David, any comments? Make any. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak on 57 Karen Road Notice of Intent? I can't talk. What? Why can't you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have let him know. <laughs> Motion to close the public hearing. Eric Gaspar. Uh, yeah. But make a motion. Yeah. You don't have any other questions? Go ahead, Eric. Roy Bishop. Seconded. David, any comments? We just. No comment. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Eric Gaspar in favor? Roy Bishop in favor? Ed Goodwin in favor. So all, unanimous four. So I would like to make a motion uh, with regards to DEP file 300 1121 that we uh, approve the application with the agent's notes uh, with, the, with the specific. I, I think we want to do this during the dry, so I I, yeah. I, 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 I would like to make the motion to it only be done during the dry, um, because I think we'd all feel more comfortable around that. So that would be the only adjustment I'd make to your notes, Becky. Okay. The other thing, Jesse, are you interested in getting rid of that uh, doc? Yes. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to. I... Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to get rid of the doc, or... Not. I think the long-term solution would be to get rid of it. I think the I beams are sagging a little, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but where it starts, it'd be a, it'd be a good idea to just. I don't know why that wouldn't be done within pointing the wall. Yeah, if it's something they. they want. I didn't mean to throw that out as a, a a late stage, but if you got somebody in there, cut those off. You want to hold off on it? You don't have to. You want to include it? It can be removed if they want to. Yeah. Well yeah. It's an option. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll amend my motion to add at, at at the applicant's discretion they can remove when doing the work. When doing the work. Yeah. David, any objection to that? All right, Roy seconded. Discussion? I have no objection. All right. I'm in favor. All right, any further discussion? Nope. Saying that, all in favor? Eric? Eric Gaspar in favor? Roy, Roy Bishop in favor? Ed Goodwin in favor. David? I'm in favor. All right, thanks, guys, for coming in. Yeah. And I didn't, we didn't get a... Uh, Notice of intent on those Christmas lights. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> it wasn't my best word. Okay. <laughs> well, geez, I think I'm going to have to go and see that next year. <laughs> if it's that highly recommended. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. No problem. Thanks, Lenny. Don't go too far, Lenny. I was going to say, Lenny, aren't you? Lenny, aren't I don't you think you're here? going anywhere. Again. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Just make sure he doesn't charge you for travel because he's he's here for another account now too. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, folks. Lenny. It's uh, 6.23, and we are on 615-165 Shepherd Road, local bylaw notice of intent.
construction of a single family home and associated work, site work. All right? Yep. Okay. Okay, what this is actually is uh, we've had a, a, a new hearing on the same number for the uh, site. However, a new legal ad was placed in the newspaper and the uh, butters were uh, re notified for the hearing for tonight, mainly because of a typographic error that was done on the original notice where we said that the uh, meeting was going to be held at 6.35, where it actually was held at, uh, posted at being 6.05, and it was, so we did it to get it in a legal position. Uh, okay. The uh, certified abutters list and the legal ad was submitted to the uh, conservation office, and everything that seems to be in order. Uh, what we did is uh, added and issued it under revision three, which was based on the uh, conservation comments that was done at the uh, site visit and hearing. And that was basically to put in the um, soil erosion control barrier and bollards along the um, westerly side of the property, which is closer to the uh, wetland area. And then on the other side, we're going to go with a uh, storm fence on the uh, but basically the easterly and southerly side of the uh, roadway in the house with a, a snow fence there to delineate the actual uh, limit of work that would be done on the site rather than the 5.9 acres. It's just staying basically within the roadway, the system, and the house area. That's it. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. So, yeah, just for the record, we yeah. do have proof of the legal and the budget notifications. We did ask that the um, hearing be reposted so that way um, people you know, and the public had the right for opportunity for question and comment if needed. Um, as you can see, the plan was revised. He included the things we that were discussed at the last meeting to be added on there. Um, so this is just more um, any additional comments on it. If um, there's no comments and or concerns with the project, afterwards I'd recommend voting just close already voting. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless there's any new information that you know comes up that's in Important. One thing I would just note also for the, the record is that we did have a forester come in a couple times and talk about doing additional work on the property. It was a little unclear, unclear if it was going to be forestry or kind of cutting to do different uses such as solar or other things. I did speak to the forester today and was advised that um, you know, they do plan on, you know, falling some dead wood on the property, a little bit different than what we heard last time. You know, I went over just that, um, you know, unless for areas outside the limits of work, you know, if they meet thresholds for filing a forest cutting plan, either under, you know, the town bylaw or the state regulations that they would need to do that if they're doing forestry activities, um, can't file a forest cutting plan to convert a use. Um, and he said that, you know, any other work in jurisdiction, they'd be sure to notify us. Um, but that they're, at this time, probably just filling some dead wood outside the limit of work. Um, I did make it clear that, you know, we did ask for a complete limit of work on the site. That way, um, you know, it is a bigger site. It doesn't appear there's any other resource areas, um, you know, on the back of the property, but, you know, the property line, anything within 200 feet, things could be off-site that um, to check in with us if they did any other work. So I definitely recommend in our letter when we do issue, um, when you issue a permit for this, that we just very clearly outline in that I'd add some language in there, any other activities. Um, within jurisdiction, we need to come back in front of us right. um, before it can happen. It's very clear. Because you are approving a limit of work. Yeah, line. felling dead trees, Lenny, would be outside of the jurisdiction of this order of conditions. Okay, I talked to him about it, and what he said that he he wasn't going to proceed with that. Okay. okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we've heard a couple different stories from the well, forester, so I'm not sure either. That's why I just want to make sure I yeah, cover, well, you know. What, what I actually did is I gave him a... F you know, talked to him on the phone and told him that you know, he's, he's confusing the project. And uh, he agreed, and he says, okay, we'll, we'll just leave everything as is, and my main objective is to build the house, and that's yeah. what he wants to do. Okay. Yeah, cleaning up dead trees and so forth uh, after he builds the house would, would be fine. 
but right. we want to contain the limit of work during the project. Right, which we, we have delineated yeah. as okay. such. Yeah. Could I see the public? Yep, anyone in the audience that would like to comment on the project? Yeah. Uh, the oh, you have to get a come up to a um, mic somewhere so we can yeah. actually, would you? Yeah, he's got, yeah. Yeah. Come, come, sure. come and sit here, right? I think we yeah. spoke once before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, my name is Alex Bain. Um, I live at 154 Shepherd Road, which is, I guess, you know, just across from the Vernal Pool uh, in the diagram. Um, so, um, you know, and apologies because I'm not really well versed in conservation law or engineering or anything. You know, I just got the notice and I was curious and I came to kind of find out what was going on. But um, I looked at an earlier version of the plans that Delaware Engineering very kindly provided me, and one thing that I had a question about was there seems to be a line going between the reserve area and the septic, uh, which goes across a driveway, but then there's a notice that driving over the system is to be avoided. So I'm wondering what is that situation and how is that mitigated for? Well, it is in the driveway right through here. Mm -hmm. in, in here, turn around and uh, staying within that. This building they're looking at staying basically on the south side of the building. South. And he's grabbing Fred Luce. Hiding mm -hmm. in this area. Okay. That's what that says. Uh, uh, we could allow driving in the area if we change the pitch size on this thing and made it eight six. Pretty tight. It's just can't be. I see. Okay. So then the reserve area, what is the it's just an area set aside in the front of this this trail. Then put in if, if it failed in the first yeah. place. And it has to be somewhere where they did test that's already um out there to make sure it could go there I see. Okay. All right. Well, um, you know, looks in order, I suppose. I mean, like, do you have any idea when the date the construction on this would begin? Okay. Yeah. And we have um, conditions in there too that we have to do a pre construction meeting. They have to set up their erosion control um, per survey. We go out and check that. They also have bollards that they need to put up that um, we actually wrote in the permit to do that as the initial phases of the project right. to make sure it doesn't get forgotten at the end. We verify that the limit of work is correct, um, et cetera, in that initial phase. There's um, certificates of understanding that we require that the owner understands the permits and the conditions and the things they're responsible for as well as the contractor. Um, you know, we do checks in on the project and they have conditions to um, close out their project with us, get a certificate of compliance and everything at the end too. So. Well, you know, I'll just say in general, you know, this is a really nice stretch of land here. You know, uh, we've really enjoyed living at it and one thing that's really nice about it is that it's very secluded and uh, quiet and you know we also have a vast variety of wildlife we see on our property we have wild turkeys we have foxes we have all variety of birds and from that wetland area we hear almost deafening sounds of uh, waterfowl uh, during the spring and summer so um, whatever can be done to preserve that 
it is um really appreciated and uh you know we just want to be able to continue um being able to have input and understanding of the project as it proceeds since it's you know they're our next door neighbors now so great that's why we're here so i live near you i live on orchard road oh great yeah All right. Thank you. We have to go to the phone line, probably too. Yep. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak on the 165 Shepherd Road notice of intent? No one's on the line. No one's on the line. Motion to close the public hearing. Eric Gaspar. Second it for Bishop. Any, any discussion? David? Nope. 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 Okay. All right. That's it. All in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor? For a bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor? David Barnett in favor. Great. Thanks. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the local bylaw a notice of intent for 165 Shepherd Road. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. you don't need to be done. Yeah, you, oh. you already actually did that at the, the last. Oh, we don't need to approve it. We just needed to. Yeah. Oh, right. cool. Just close it. Check that. <laughs> well, what about uh, to defend Eric? What about the changes that were brought to this meeting? Those are what you requested at the last meeting. Right. You didn't. You didn't ask me to change okay. it and come All right. back and then approve it. You said you didn't approve it, yeah. providing those things are great. All right, good. All right, thanks, Lenny. What do we eat now? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you step out there, Lenny? Yeah, we were talking about it. Really? Again? That's good. Yeah. We are now at 625 53 Hillside Drive, continue, continued RDA, request uh, for determination of applicability. How are you doing? Doing well yourself. Good. All right, just a um, quick summary. Um, so this, uh, the hearing was continued in order for us to get a few more peer reviews um, for the board to look at for this. Um, I sent out um, three additional RFPs to different firms. Um, yeah. One was received back since that last one, so there's a total of um, two at this time that meet um, what was asked for in the RFP. Uh, both forms, uh, both firms are qualified, and the so scopes are similar in nature and cost. Um, Oxbow Associates has performed work for uh, the board before on a few different various projects. Um, Fog Hunter Ecological. Um, this is Stephen Liberty. He performed work for the board indirectly um, to GBA um, when he was there. He recently left that firm and started his own firm here. So he's on there. Like I said, both are um, have a lot of experience, qualified. Oxbow has um, multiple staff. Um, where um, Bob Hunter Steve, Stevens um, on his own. All right. Good. Eric, what did you think? Uh, I, I read through both of the proposals. I, I, I would favor going with the uh, newer company at, at the lower price. Uh, I think it's in our best interest to have as many responsible contractors responding to our RFPs. And, and given the fact that they are both responsible, this is the lowest bidder and it will expand our net, I think it, it's in our best interest to approve that. Agree. Agree? Okay. David? Yeah, I, I, um, I had the same opinion you did, but, but I like the points that Eric made um, and could go with, uh, and I like the name better, too. <laughs> well, obviously, that's really the whole point. <laughs> 
I like the name. So um, I guess I, I'd go with um, rather than Oxbow. I'd try. Well, kind of. Yeah. Oh, rather than say that, we've got to have a motion. Okay. Yeah. I was just well. That we're going to get to a motion. I was just making a comment so we could move it along. Do you have a motion? Uh, I'd like. Vendor for the third party review uh, located at um, Great Hillside. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it just for discussion's yep. sake. Uh, discussion? I mean, I've already given my opinion. Yeah. It's nothing I don't have anything against Oxbow. I just would prefer to get some new blood in here. You've always been willing to give your opinion a second time, Eric. I know. <laughs> Part um, of my charm? Question yeah. mark? <clears throat> um, okay, all in favor of Oxbow? David? David Black in favor. Eric Gaspar opposed? Board Bishop opposed? Ed Goodwin opposed. I'd like to make a motion that we approve Bog Hunter Ecological to uh, perform the third party review for 55 Hillside Drive RDA. I'll second that. Second the okay. We have two seconds. You can pick one of them. Okay. <laughs> um, discussion. Just for the record, excuse me, I believe you said 55, it's 53. Oh, well, right. it's the mask. I, I, I don't know how I, this works, and I'm like, <laughs> I think I tried to say 53, but it's the mask. I'm so. sure I like my neighbors, but I, I don't know. I think 55's on the other side of the river. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I agree. 53. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Eric Aspar in favor? Lord Bishop in favor? Ed Goodwin in favor? David Blackman in favor. Great. All right, we got it. All right, Becky, you all set with that? I think we, we need a continuance. continuation. I beg your pardon? We need a continuation on the right. hearing. Right, yep. Um, would you like a continuation? Uh, yes, I would. All right. Great. Becky, do you Thank think you. we will have that for our meeting on the 31st? Is that is uh, that enough time? Well, no, we potentially could. I would definitely say not the 10th. Um, you know, by the time we sign the paperwork, get that through. Um, but, I mean, it's starting to warm up. March is a good time. Um, I, I don't think it would hurt to put it on the 31st in case they are ready. We can always just do a continuation in advance so you don't have to come in if that's necessary. Okay. Uh, so so moved. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Continuation. David. Favor. Eric Aspar in favor. Lord Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Thank you. Thank you very much. So John, I'll email all the stuff to you tomorrow. Um, and, right, because I have to drop you off a check for escrow. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, John. Actually, I have. Thank you. Do you want? I have hard copy. Do you want a hard copy of everything? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank I you so much. I forgot that I did. I've got that here. Okay. Right, I did ask you. I think you can Thanks. bring your checks right to her office if you'd like, or you can. Okay, I thought you were going to say I can just write it out to her for a Well, no. <laughs> no. All right, so then everybody's going to want one. Yeah, so it has <laughs> the RFP. There's two RFPs because I had to send it back out. So I didn't want to not provide you the second one with the dates and everything. There's nothing different on it. Thank you very as well much. As those oh. Thank you. One fifty Charlton Road, continued NOI development of a commercial building, truck parking, and supported infrastructure, DEP file number three hundred. Dash one 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 five. Mr. Kravosky. Uh, I believe the engineers are on. Yes. Um, yep. Then we can hear you now. Steve Brissett and Jeremy Crocon are on again. So just the Jeremy, can you hear us? Okay, good. Um, quick summary, this is a continuation. Um, we've had um, some documents submitted. I mean, I'm not going to 
read everything that's already been written on here. Um, project's been revised based off peer review comments. Um, submitted back in, we've had a second peer review response, um, which was provided. And just to, just to summarize that, um, you know, with the second peer review report, um, so the comments primarily um, existed around stormwater management, um, revisions and details that were needed. I recommend that the comments are addressed. In addition to that, some of the O&M plans um, require adjustments for the land use of the high pollutant load in the notes from the last meeting. Um, some of the things that um, weren't included were comments to numbers 61, 64, 65, 66, and 68 of the peer review report, uh, mostly um, revolved around um, river riverfront comments that they had, um, as well as some of the, the staff comments that we had uh, from the last meeting um, hadn't, hadn't been addressed. Um, so with what we've seen with the revised plans, the stormwater structures were um, moved underground to reduce riverfront impact. Um, there is still work, a little over 6,000 square feet that's proposed within riverfront area. Um, some question about snow storage area, which is located within the parking lots is where we want it. So that way it gets stormwater management. However, um, the, the peer review engineers did have some comments that they had some concerns that that, that might have um, some issues with maneuverability with the trucks in the parking lot. Um, based off of the, the, the siting of those in the, the kind of site constraint scale. Um, project includes um, additional mitigations from the first um, plan set that we saw in here. There's a sand delta on the site within the bordering vegetated wetland that they're um, proposing to take out. Um, you know, there's a, a few different mitigation areas on here, on site and off site. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that, um, would you go out and take a look at those? Um, and see if you know you feel like those are those are adequate um, mitigation for um, the riverfront um, impact that they're proposing on the site. Um, another thing that I think is important to to, to note um, for the board to think about too is there's temporary use of the existing um, stream crossings that's being proposed as part of the construction of the project. Um, there wasn't a lot of details on you know is that for the whole project, initial phases, is it just for the restoration area? Um, it would be useful to see, um, you know, kind of a, a construction sequence that kind of outlines how they're planning to do the work to know the extent of that work over there within Riverfront area um, as part of that project. Um, you know, I'm recommending at this time that, that we do see that they fully demonstrate compliance um, with the state Riverfront regulations. I did include, um, you know, some pages from the, the state asked for you to look at just to see there's um, a pretty thorough explanation of reviews of alternatives that are necessary to go through for the performance standards um, that I think that need to really be shown. Um, and that way you can, you know, see if they've, they've shown, they've demonstrated, they, they've, they've looked at all those alternatives. Um, there must be no practical or substantially economic alternatives to the project with less adverse effects on the interest. Um, you know, one of the things is looking at alternative sites. Um, I did see that there is an, an a, and it's hard because there's not a lot of industrial areas in town, um, and that's the, the zoning that would be required for this type of use that are within proximity, um, you know, to the highway for their use. So there is a property on Main Street um, that is for sale, and I think it's it's necessary as part of demonstrating the alternatives that they explore um, that as part of what is required. So, um, you know, I did include some additional notes that, um, you know, once and if they, they fully demonstrate that they can, that they're in compliance with that, some of the things that I think you should consider is um, some type of maybe stockade fencing around the facility. You think about it's probably almost like a 24 hour use facility, lights, noise, um, that type of use directly adjacent to the riverfront area is going to have some impact on wildlife habitat there um, whereas fencing might help um, with that to some degree um, and then to ensure you know that there's no you know potential future cumulative impact um, sometimes with riverfront area um, it might be advisable to do some type of restriction that's recorded on the deed preventing any future future use of that area um, uh, another thing to um, 
that a little more information would be good about. And we talked about it before when we were doing like the NRAD, is there is a Verizon leasing area for a tower on this property that's um, you know on the opposite side of the, the property here behind the adjacent lot that it doesn't look like it's in riverfront area um, and it's actually to go through the adjacent property to get back there. But we just need to demonstrate on the plan it shows it as a small rectangle. Reviewing the aerial photos, um, it looks like it's much bigger. I don't know what their lease area is and if it goes into riverfront area. So I think that's kind of important that that's fully shown there to make sure that that's not within the riverfront area. Um, and if it was, when was it permitted? Was riverfront already, you know, some impact for that already taken into account? Might be pre riverfront regulations. I know we probably talked about it a little bit before, but I think it just needs to be shown accurately there so we're, we're, we're clear on that. And that would have to obviously be excluded from any deed restriction that potentially could be put on that riverfront area because it's already existing here. Um, so, and then as far as um, work on the adjacent property, we talked about this before a little bit that, um, I mean, it's gonna be in riverfront area. Um, even the restoration and then the temporary use, um, it, it will need some permit. It's not included in this notice of intent. Um, it only has the one address, 150 Charlton Road on there. So there, there should it should be either included on this NOI or a, a separate filing, I would imagine, depending on the extent of work that's gonna be occurring. Um, so, I mean, I think, right, overall, they need to show that they're addressing all the comments, peer review, as well as staff. It's important about the riverfront, very important there. Um, you know, I know they're, they've met with the peer reviewer, had some exchanges, asking some questions, that they're working on those things. I'd recommend continuing the hearing, um, probably to the next meeting, if they think they're gonna have materials, and then trying to do a site visit, maybe at our next site visit schedule. Um, and I did talk to the peer review engineers. Um, we do have them contacted to do a site visit with us. I think that would be useful to go out and um, look at, you know, all the areas. Huh? Beck, that it? <laughs> that it. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead. Thank you. Fine. To highlight the points that you brought up, thank you. Uh, one, there was a question about Locating that delta of sand in the snow, it's on your September 2000, 2021 plan, it shows. Okay. We didn't, um, so we flagged it out back in the summer, and we didn't, we, we put it on the plan. We didn't say anything about it. We didn't know there's uh, enough that we were doing for a restoration of the river by taking the culverts out the twin 36s, making a river bottom, uh, restoring wetlands, restoring riverfront. And then the, the other piles on the opposite property, there is language in, uh, in 1058.5 that talks about severe slopes and infiltration. And that's another, in fact, I had a cell tower in your town years ago down past uh, 84, and that same slope question came up. It's uh, A and B on, on a question under 1058.5, and, and it does talk about better infiltration if you have severe slopes. We have one-to-one -one slopes on those fill piles, which were tailings from 88, 89. And uh, the peer reviewer did question, did we need that? If we're trying to meet your two to one restoration of riverfront area compared to what we're altering, we needed all areas to be restored. So we had the piles, the crossing, and then we added the delta in, and we came up to just 100 <coughs> square feet over the two to one. Then came in the cell tower, which is a 214 square feet off the top, and it was 1999. So we looked at that in that utility easement, and we it was only a utility easement that was in the riverfront area. So we have the ability to go over there and take out the autumn olive that has grown back up into that utility easement that was dug and then smooth. Make sure there's a sufficient topsoil, as also brought up in 1058.5, uh, same similar topsoil to what's native in the area, and that's what you're supposed to attain, and that's what we described in our other riverfront restoration areas. So we would. Uh, Make sure there's sufficient topsoil and reseed that, turn that back into viable riverfront area, that 414 plus or minus square feet, the little triangle that's on the cell tower site. Restore the fill piles. And as far as the sediment coming from across the street from Gifford, we did approach the, the stop and shop gas station people. 
We do have a demonstration of three and a half feet of road sand in that catch basin over there, which is receiving it from the gully erosion on the eastern side of Gifford, which is a continuing ongoing uh, sediment deposition into this property. That's why we have two feet of sediment in that delta, and the delta is again shown on the plan. At the outflow of the 36 inch, it's uh, 10 inches. There's just a, a bare opening in the, in the mouth of the pipe. So this has been receiving that road sand on that from that dirt road. We did go to the town manager, found out because it was a question as to whether or not it was public or private. It is public road, so that's a, a matter for potentially the commission and pursuing the public to stabilize that gully erosion, which continues ongoing. We would take out the delta over on the asphalt in the stop and shop and suck out the catch basin as we wrote that we would maintain that while we have while we're under an order of conditions so that the sediment that we, we, we removed that we'll show you across the street, our delta, which is sitting on top of the A horizon, so it's a buried A under it. We would go down with a mini. We described how we're going to do that with a mini. Don't touch the trees. It would be under the guidance. Remove the, the delta, which is now entering into the flow path and going into the stream that crosses at the crossing down below. So there'd be three areas of restoration, four areas of restoration, including that small area in the cell tower, to make to come up to the two to one restoration of riverfront area compared to what we were asking to continue to keep altered. That was one point. The so we have hard for me to see. I'm sorry. The deed restriction makes sense, of course. The that was a utility easement, as I stated. We went over the date when that was flagged for that delta. The light. Our engineer is on board over here, Steve, and we'll bring that up. But he has, a, there are a, there was pages on the site plan that talk about the lighting and the zero. And, and I'm going to check that off, if you don't mind, if we can get to Steve on that one, PNS. Um, the off-site questions about six, I believe, uh, over by Galileo, that other site. We did look at that. There was a PNS at the time. Uh, Chacharoni Properties had it on the PNS, and we're not. We're investigating that to see where it is stands with those people, because it was bordering his existing land. I did look at it. I did flag it. There are wetlands on that property, um, and uh, and then so he's still on that. We have to get back to him to see what he's doing with it on that other side. Uh, you can might tell me clear. It was six. Eight, I don't have it in front of me. Six eight. Six ninety eight. Six ninety eight Main. I have six eighty nine. So I'm sorry, I had it backwards here. Six ninety eight. Okay, that's over by going towards Brimfield. And let's see, the southern cell tower. The temporary, the temporary alteration of the crossing to come in. Steve and I talked today about coming over that existing crossing. It would only be for the erosion controls. We talked to Procon today, so we would go in just to put the erosion controls in through there minimize any riverfront alteration uh, continuing where we just restored it with Tesla and Prouty in that trench system and put the and took the pipes out and the P-stone and all that good restoration we did last year. The fill piles up by 20. That's two stand pipes we took out. So it would only be for that crossing in and out and again, just that temp, but not for construction. Okay. We would come in from 20 with the curb cut, access that way and start building from there in with anything we're doing. So that Hopefully, we'll use any question about continuing alteration of riverfront area, adding up our square footage of temporary alteration, which adds into the total riverfront area, even though it's temporary. Temp versus open. I believe, yes, the alternative analysis with the questions, we, we have the drafts on that, and we we'll, uh, yes, they have to get to you within a couple of days so that your peer reviewer can look at those other alternatives, which had quite a bit more alteration because we weren't adding in any mitigation. We just added to this project all the mitigation to get the two to one. Initially, Mr. Procon wanted it a, a future use building. We've cut this thing back, cut it back. We've just cut it back more with the underground infiltration under the parking lot, got rid of that detention structure in the roof front area. So we believe we're at um, for what he needs at this minimum need and turnaround radius. The Summit Engineering gave you turnaround radiuses for the truck so that we show we need this type of radius to get in there. We just did a truck terminal for Russell Freight a couple of years ago. It was similar turning radiuses with a wetland near us and, and how much we had to restore. So I, I believe in that site inspection, again, we're ready at any time that things melt up. I believe I've covered the points. 
as you were talking about, that there might be more, but I believe I covered them. Oh, and again, the 99 for the South, so it was on the roof. I, I flagged that, though. <coughs> so Do we have a site, a site plan we can put up? Sure. Thank you. Uh, if Steve could just answer that last oh, question go ahead, about Steve. lighting, because I, he was the lighting guy on that. Go back question. to Steve. Becky, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for. Yeah. Sorry about that, Steve. You know. Steve, you're not coming. Uh, louder, Steve. It's only on here. I can turn this up here. It, it's only on here, so. Okay. I'm blasting. Go ahead, try now. Go ahead, Steve. Go for it. Try it. No. Maybe get closer to your microphone. Yeah, get right up like I used to have to do. Remember when I was in here? <laughs> yell at the thing. No. <laughs> Let's not remember that. Not working. We can hear you. I just no, I, I, I want I to can't repeat follow. what he says speak, to you. Yeah, speak up like when you. He says hi. I can follow it. So. That's a little bit better. I thought. Okay. Here, right. let me. So the night shift is a lighting plan. Like I said, shift twelve and twelve and twelve. Yeah. Uh, the the equipment that we have is on the side. The whole west side of that side. If I could, because we did a, uh, talk about it today. He has a sheet. He can give you a sheet. They did do lumens. on. The, we, we just did a Sunoco gas station in the riverfront area. We also, you can study how much in this uh, certain shades and shading that the post has on it to make sure it comes in. So they did this study. If he could, he'll tell you or he can email you tomorrow what sheet it's on, but it, it gives how much is shed, shedding off a light. And he yeah. says shutting off a light was at zero under the model. So he'll bring that up yeah. more because you're not supposed to light the riverfront area. Yeah, and we, we just great. had that with this rebuild. Of, well, actually, a, we took a building down and put a new one up in Oxford at the Sunoco, and we had to go through that. Yeah, so I think that's, that's great for the, the lighting, but also you think there's the trucks that are going to be going the in and out of there with like, he'll the have headlights? To, he'll have to answer that yeah, question. Yeah, so that was just, you're going to have a fence around it anyways, which was like a chain link, even if it was like, more of a stockade or something. It just yeah. kind of helped block that vehicle lights that were constantly kind of in that parking lot area too. I think that's important. That was the, more of my focus, I think. There is that type of chain link with the mesh that goes through it, and obviously you've seen it, so that can buffer it. But we'll look at yeah, the I've buffer seen that. that. Don't buffer that well. Uh, um, those break fairly easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we're, we're going to have to look at something that lasts, and whatever you come up, whatever we'll come up with something that's permanent or might need maintenance every 10 years, and it can be a condition to, to um, continue to do that. But, but um, if I could, so the, the mitigation is something that will, we're not sure when anybody else would ever um, get involved with these types of mitigations, full stream, and again, delta, and uh, then the fill pile. So we, we hope that you uh, recognize that that is quite a bit to contribute, which is required by you. but. It might not happen in any other in any other scenario. That's all. That's all I said. Yeah. Can we see the plan now? Thank you. Yep. I'm not hearing what you're saying. Are you guys? Not at all. As you might have heard, he's uh, he's talking about the noise already off of 20, the noise already off the pike, and, and he'll have to explain that more in paperwork. Okay, yeah. 
Sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he should yell like my mother did, you know. And we could hear him right, no problem. He's this too way. nice a guy. I know, he is. Way. Um, do you, let's see. Date? No, yeah, I just filtered it by date. I just want to make sure I get the, the presentation plan. Let's see. Oh. Jeremy, we can, you're not on mute there. Talking about tomorrow's coffee, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Let me share my screen here. So this is, yeah, this is, it might be harder for them to see. They might be seeing it in a small block here. Mm. Um, Dave, is that just a small block for you? Small, but I can see it. Okay, I'm just wondering if I can change, hide everyone. See what happens if you do that. Let's say hide everybody and see if that just says. Oh. <laughs> well, if we're talking. That's then, bigger. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Oh. oh. All right. Yeah. No one else could talk. I'm sorry about that. No. <laughs> Now the light blue. Actually, so for you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, where am I? Yeah, you can see it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, truck parking is where? So, let me point this on. No, I see the two. Yeah. In my, it, yeah. So, if I'm correct, This area is where um, cars will be parked that come in kind of impounded, is, is kind of my understanding. Will um, be a cage? Visitors will be here. Trucks come in. I'll call it the turnaround thing. Um, and I don't know how much of that will be, but this is where they'll be bringing trucks in. So they'll be coming in, lights flashing kind of this way from the vehicles. So this is, you can see this is an earlier. Duration. There's still other things in here. Let me see if I have this turnaround. How many? Uh, how many cars is this approved to impound? I'm writing questions down. I'm. Okay. I'm not. I mean, you know, what are we looking at here? Steve, Mike. He's on here. Yeah. So that's like 20 the, to the 30. fleet, his fleet. 20 to 30 maximum? Cars. There's more than that in my yard. Yeah. I thought I had the turnaround plan, but I'm confused that I didn't. Can we ask Jeremy? Yeah. Jeremy, how many cars do you plan on storing on this site? All right. In the past, Jeremy. So, Jeremy, had good one. That's on a high. Yeah. Okay. In the past, we have had uh, issues with car storage because of everything from ownership all the way through. Uh, how do you plan to handle that so that it, it flows, so you only have? 30 cars in there. What happens if you get to 55 cars? Uh, we, well, we have other facilities as well. We have four other facilities with acres of property. We move these things around quite a bit. It takes this from the day we take the vehicle in. If somebody abandons the vehicle, it takes us 81 days to get rid of the vehicle or take possession of the vehicle. Right. Um, prior to that, we have a holding yard to go to. After about twenty to twenty to thirty days, they're gone. We're holding them all, and that's where. Where, where is a holding yard? Um, 
So we we did we have one in Kirby, we have one in Westfield, and another one in West Springfield. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair, while we're on this, may I ask a question? Go ahead. What? Uh, uh, so, Jeremy, I'm I'm just curious. Uh, it, the that fenced in yard, it looks to be pretty consistent on two different inside of two different hundred foot buffers, but it, around the uh, right hand side of the plan of what I'm seeing here. Uh, where you, there was customer parking, it seems to me that uh, you know there might be an opportunity to park those impound vehicles over there, so show it's outside me, of the hundred foot. So we got the hundred foot buffer here, mm -hmm. and the hundred foot buffer here, and this is where I'm to understand the impound yard is going to be. So we're going to have impound vehicles inside this hundred foot buffer, but over here, here's our two hundred foot buffer, and here's our hundred foot buffer. There's plenty of parking in between the 100 and 200 foot here. So it seemed to me, if we're talking about impound vehicles where there's likely to be leakage and likely to be hazardous materials that are going to come off, that a better solution for this would be to put the impound vehicles over here because it's going to keep it completely outside of the 100 foot uh, as opposed to over here where it's likely to be majority inside of the 100 foot. But so, uh, uh, you know, it just has me confused as to why we need to have it over here inside the 100 foot versus over here inside the, the 200 foot. Does that make any sense? Okay. Well, I'll try to explain the main point. I'm sure there's no engineer. Um, we, I, I've been through this. Uh, I just, we just built a facility that, that has the, the separation systems and such on the impervious pavement. If you look to the right of the building, we're going to have a gate. Right, everything sort of behind the building is going to be part of the storage yard. It's going to be our general general parking and storage yard. It will be all in To the right of the building from the road? or to separation unit. So, God forbid anything leaks, it certainly won't make its way to, to the ground. However, we have... Uh, so, the customer parking, that's a whole other animal in front of the building. That's customer parking and possibly some employee parking up front. In the rear, what we call the storage yard, if there was any sort of contaminants leaking, uh, they would go into the separator. Everything's going to be impervious. Uh, we have that. We have a very strict uh, environmental policy now. Uh, Defense 21E issues. Uh, we, uh, I mean, honestly, most of the time when these cars crash, everything leaks out. At, by the time we get there, everything's pretty much gone. However, we can get this trip trip. Uh, we can put cans, we can put pads. Um, we have to pump our separator out about every three years is what it calls for. It's been five years. I called our, well, I called for the pump at Western Mass Environment, Environmental. Didn't get any petrol out of the separator because of our policy. Uh, but there is a safeguard separator, but nothing to it. Uh, through Jim. That, there's uh, two protocols for the employees that if anything's leaking, it goes inside the building. We, I'm not sure if the engineers got that to you yet, but I'm making the point uh, that, that, the, that they have to be trained in this. If there's anything leaking, it goes inside, and then it's contained inside. And uh, It's a detailed protocol, and they have to they go through training to ensure anything is looked at. So let me make sure that in our package, you, obviously, you need the protocol. It was meant for you. Uh, we looked at it, and maybe you don't have it yet, but that's something that he is uh, discussing. Jeremy, also, when you said the right-hand side of the building, there was a question from the Conservation Commission. You mean uh, the way the plan is facing now to the right corner, which uh, if there was a north arrow here, it's probably the northeast corner of the building for parking? Correct. Correct. Thank you. That was that call. So protocol. As Glenn, as you said, I can't stress enough the importance of us preventing spills before they even happen. We have a full-time employee. All he does uh, is his full-time job. Uh, of course, it's everyone's job, but his job is to watch the rest of it. We simply don't have the. And uh, 
like I said, God forbid someone brings in a Honda and it, the toil can in our yard, um, it would be caught by the separator. Visually, it would be caught through the chairman and then the separator, but it, it, it's all there's a, a complete protocol on his, all his yards. For the I, I mean, just I, I feel so much better with utility building it where we are versus where we are now. We're on impervious, or we have policy, of course. We're still doing the pad, and um, the only two storage yards or two storage yards in town right now. Or aren't going to come anywhere near what we're going to do. All right. Is that part of this? Oh, losing you there, Jeremy. Let's see if we've got anybody uh, in the audience. I did have one more question for Glenn. Yeah, go ahead. Glenn. Yes, uh, sir. So uh, the Verizon, whoa. I think we're going to warp speed. Um, the Verizon cell tower area. Yes, sir. Um, was I? Did I hear that right? You were including that as part of the two to one um, repair, but it, it it seems to me as if it grew up, and we should have been maintaining that to begin with, right? Or um, am I am I misunderstanding it's, it's, what you're saying? That it, because you said there's something like two hundred and fourteen two hundred and fourteen square feet. Square feet there was and, a, and do you own it? Yeah, we we own the we we own the property. They have an easement on it. Okay, all right. So it was a utility easement, not the main driveway going into the site. So if you are going towards the site on the right, there was a nipping of 214 feet for the utility easement to get obviously underground for the electricity and such, and uh, that has just grown back up. But we'll have a site inspection. We'll actually stake it out, show you where the 214 okay. is. And if we were to look at that entire back area, it was once cleared. It's this autumn olive, and it has grown back in that 214. But we'll, uh, yes, we were. I would we just weren't going to add it in as restoration. We were. We were only trying to. We will add it in as restoration if it needs it. But we wanted to. We were about 100 square feet under the two to one. We were looking for anything to add into the restoration to get to your two to one bylaw, riverfront restoration, and it just came up to my attention today where Steve sent over the, the old plan from 99 and showed that little, and then we went on aerial photographs, and we'll, we'll have to stake it out and see this, yeah, 214 yeah. square feet. If it, if it requires us to make sure that it's riverfront restored, I'm just saying we will. I, I guess my only point is, if it was, uh, under the previous permit, it was supposed to be restored, and it's still your custody. I don't know that you, we can, it, it, it seems to me, we're, if we use that, again as restoration uh, that it, it didn't perform the first time what's to prove I, that it's going to perform this time i, I don't recall maybe I'm, maybe i'm reading it wrong but that's just that's just what i'm hearing what we will do if we can go through rebecca we'll look at the old file see what, what it called for there it didn't say anything about restoration on the plans that i saw I, that and would make so if it was File. We well, it, it, we can look at it and see what was required. We'll see if there were riverfront yeah. Like yeah. Steve's on here. He wants to say something. David. Go ahead. Well, first of all, uh, I'm referring to protocol. We on the conservation commission also have some protocols. We also have a state law. It has to do with the Weather Protection Act. There's a hundred foot buffer zone. I have to have a pool with some distinguishing reason for entering into that 100 feet. And yet, you just assume that you can use that 100 feet. That's not correct. Uh, Additionally, uh, we talked about 6,000 feet of repairing of a riverbank. There's a solution to repairing the riverbank that is not destroyed in the first place. I think that this proposal on the wrong side of the street. The river is there. The river has to be protected. The river is protected by a 100 foot buffer. The river is not protected by gigantic light poles that stare away every creative animal in the world. It's not protected the way most of the unless we protect it. And by interfering in the 100 foot buffer, interfering in the 200 foot buffer, all of these interferences can remediate until. 
whatever the latter is going to take, but it's not the same thing as leaving it alone. That, if we could, we didn't alter the riverfront area during riverfront law. That that alteration in those pipes were in there, had been in there from the 70s. We didn't alter it. We were proposing to restore it, yep. the pipes okay. crossing. Yep. The 100 foot buffer under the wetland protection regulation, I know yours are different, is not a protected area. It's, um, it's an area that you can work in. And then you have to prove that you're not causing sedimentation, uh, uh, taking shade away. There's a few things that the buffer zone under the state law requires us to do to work next to a wetland. What we're doing is restoring riverfront and stopping sedimentation, which is ongoing from right, going in. That's all. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is, is ask for a continuation at this point. We've been, we've been going through it. We're going to have to have a site visit. I think Steve had one more question. I'm not sure. Go for it, Steve. If you get, Steve, Steve. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something for Eric. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Eric, the, the thing about the tower, Becky brought that up in her last list of comments. We had sewer mitigation supplied with uh, the Sturbridge Wetland Bylaw prior to looking at the tower. But when we looked at the tower, there was a possibility of disturbance did occur in the water riverfront facility east. And that would push us, we only had like 100. One calculation. If we put the 15 in there, it brings us over by 35 feet. That's what Glenn's trying to talk about, but it's already been stored back to its original, then fine. Tells you count. It's more of saying, hey, we'll work it back. If that, that clarifies that. Okay. Yeah. That's what Thank you, Steve. Yep. Good. I'd like. I'd at this point, I'd like to truncate it in the middle. Um, you, you've got a lot of stuff you need to move forward with, and we want to get there for a site visit as soon as 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 we can. You know, we'll we'll request that continuance. Okay, great. Any discussion on the continuation, David? Can I go to the public end? Yeah. Is there anyone on the public line this evening that would like to speak on the? 150 Charlton Road, Notice of Intent. Who's on the line? Who's on the line? So the next meeting would be March 10th, but continue to be till then. Um, the site visit would be March 1st. Um, I assume that maybe you'd want to do the site visit before the next meeting, provided the snow cover's gone. Sure. Um, if your viewer has been notified of that, so you'd be available to go up. Good. Thank you. And Glenn, try and get as much of the updating in as possible before, so we have it for the site visit, not for the. Well, before this third, yeah. the first. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just a couple of those alternatives. Thank you. Yep. All in favor? Continuation. Eric Aspar in favor. Lord Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, Steve, are you staying on? Yeah, yeah. Well. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I couldn't stay on. Yeah, uh, well. Uh, you don't have to, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'll stay on, thanks. Okay, so we'll skip a couple of numbers here. Steve's going to stay on and go to um, number seven. Good night, Glenn. Good night, now. Thank you. Thank okay, you. DB file number 300. Dash nine two nine, seventy Paradise Lane. Yes. Um, so just a quick summary. Um, this is something that we've been talking about for a little while. We discussed this at our January sixth um, meeting. Um, this is a, a project site that received order to conditions in two thousand fifteen. The order has expired. Uh, expired in two thousand eighteen. Work's been done for some time. Um, they had a tree removal out there maybe a year plus or so ago. At that time, we noted um, in our files that the order was not closed out. We asked them to close it out. Um, wasn't wasn't done. I had been in the area, saw they had cut the trees down. You went out, took a look to see if you had any um, concern for replanting. It was one of the conditions for the tree removal permit. You did not. We reminded them that they needed to close their permit out. Um, 
and I went out, you asked that I did a site visit with the property owner, which I did in the beginning of December. Um, so we discussed the results of the site visit at the January 6th meeting. We did send them a letter letting them know that, um, you know, it appeared that they hadn't um, met the conditions, um, you know, of the, the permit, which was following the plan. Um, and we asked for a revised plan to be submitted for compliance. The biggest concerns were um, stormwater management on site. Um, and after they come bring something to us for the January 27th meeting, I've been working with um, Seth here of Summit Engineering. He submitted an as built. Um, they did note at the time that they might be able to implement some DMPs across the street for management. However, um, they weren't really planning on doing anything for the downspouts on the site. Um, you know, it appears that. You know, they're not in compliance with what was approved. Um, I do think that it would benefit the site. We do have, um, and I can pull up the plan for you too. Um, there's four different downspouts on the site. Um, you know, the project, you have a border vegetated dirt wetland on the site, as well as um, the adjacent lake, so bank and then the water. Um, I think that it would benefit that. I was going back and reviewed the old, um, meetings in the file a little bit more um, and noted that there was discussion initially for, um, sorry, there was a tree and shrub restoration planting that was originally proposed as part of the initial um, plan that came in for the project, uh, which was revised and discussed at the meeting when it was approved. And there's supposed to be eight, eight shrubs for mitigation plantings in the site too, which I wasn't aware of um, initially. I had to kind of read that oh, in a minute to understand that. Um, I don't know that those have been planted on the site. I don't. I don't think so. We didn't talk about it with the property owner and I about that. So, my recommendation is that they follow the plan and that they come up with a way to address um, managing that stormwater yeah. off the off the site. Okay, Steve. I don't know if we can hear you, but if you want to retort yeah, to that. David, any comments? He says he remembers what the site looked like. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do too. Well, I'll go first then. Eric, you got anything? Well, uh, I can pull up that. Yeah, could plan. could we look up the plan? Here's, I just it's hard for me to Steve, it, let it, me let me just oh, give Can I just say one thing before I forget? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, um, part of not doing um, the rest the the tree planting that was originally discussed was keeping the trees on the site too from what I what I read. There was a clump of birches and two maples. I don't know. I haven't been out there since I read the minutes and everything. If those are still there too, so that was part of the consideration for that. I mean, you you guys know me. I, I, if, if it's on if it's on the plan, I'd like it to be implemented. So, well, it's, we agreed to it and they agreed to it. Yeah. The, well, the, the well, here's one the, picture that was sent. I guess I should share my screen, but you can kind of see where this gutter comes down. All this. I mean, there's no reason that I would think a rain garden couldn't be on the site too. So, share my screen, sorry guys. Steve, I'm just showing the picture that um, you were talking. talking. Yeah, that, that's what we thought. Because be rounding back towards the front of the Stonia and getting it running off to the back. <laughs> It's not a huge amount of water. Uh, most of the water on that road, the other side of the table, down off the Mount Dan at the end of the road, can't get through anymore. Uh, that's where most of the water is out there. That's a very, believe it or not, small drainage area for the pipe cabin. And I believe on the actual, it shows that he uncovered that end of that pipe. The direction of that pipe is quite a bit different than what it's shown on this. You're uh, talking about this. The end was buried. We never were able to cover it. Most. Yeah. So the, this is where the border and vegetative land yeah. is. I mean, and I was out here too. There, there's, you know, obviously we had a really wet year, but there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of water in this area. Uh, do you want me to show you the as built after this? This is the plan that was approved. Um, see how it's got the. I don't. I don't need control. it as built. I'm just waiting for my turn to speak. Oh, okay. I didn't know what you wanted to look at. So. Um, we, Steve, I give you a couple. Uh, give you a little history from that, so Barnacle won't give it to you. Um, first of all, the mess across the street. He did an amazing job of cleaning it up. Um. But that's not the subject. That is not the subject. He, he could come in here in the best looking suit in town and we'd still want to talk about uh, the erosion control and the, uh, the, what he's going to do with the water coming off the roof. The house that was there before I have to argue with you about because I think most of the water was going into the house, uh, in the house that he bought. It didn't come off the roof. It went right down into the house. Um, so, but we have an agreed plan, and we're, we're not getting agreement. And you come to us and ask us for an as-built with a non-as-built. Um, he complained a lot about the drainage swale on the side of his house, and we had neighbors come in and complain about it also. So if he hasn't solved that, which it sounds like he hasn't, and he's not bringing that back as a part of the plan, then then this is not an acceptable project. It hasn't been completed. And he's got tw he's got 21 acres on the other side of the street. If he wants to put some water over there, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure he can figure out a way to do it. He he must have a little a little Kubota or something that he works with. We're going to end up with a culvert that's right there. We're not going to be able to do any a 
additional sort of treatment to it by dumping it over there and then right back. Um, I think that's more of the issue. Um, I think uh, I've talked to him. We could possibly just move filtration to where the original T1 pump is supposed to be and try to get it in there and try not to make too much of a mess in the process. Now, as far as the neighbor, I went to that site. I looked at that site that when asked to look at his issue. And this past year, that water table has been so high, and his biggest issue was the water was pouring right out of his well. That's right off the side of the road. Uh, there was that, and there was the water running on the other side. As far as on Timmy's side, yeah, it was wet, but it was no different than it was before. Well, then make it better. Not a problem. I will pass that on. That would be what I would. Um, and and we're not trying to complicate it. Um, you, we've you've spent a lot of time around these lakes, and we've spent a lot of time around these lakes, and we have to do a good job with them. Right. Exactly. So this is the as built that was sent him. And you can see there's downspout, downspout, downspout. Yeah. The downspouts here. Um, also, you know, a patio, which wasn't on the in initial plan. It's just a porous one. But, I mean, there's a lot of lawn back here. I do think there could be opportunity on each side here for something like a rain garden um, versus lawn that could help manage this, this water. Um, you know, if if that other system can't be put in, uh, right. I think that would could be a really good option here. Um, considering, you know, I mean, it is a pretty, a pretty high water table in the back of the two, where an infiltration system might not work that well. I don't know. Something something as an option. Would would have we required permitting for that patio? I would assume so, right? We would have a plan. We would. I mean, it's it's within. Yeah, it's, in the 50 feet. it's within the fifty foot, right? Yeah, absolutely, it would have been at least if it was within the lawn area and RDA for us for the board. Yep. Okay. Yep. There's some changes on the side. Steve, wasn't that on the right hand side of the house? Wasn't that on someone else's property? That is correct. That is on the neighbor. I think we've talked about it enough, unless you have anything else to say, Steve. I think we need. No, no, I, mean, uh, I just want to make a comment. That being like that, when we get down to about the other part of it, uh, if, if the decision would indicate us the back side, at least the front side, the way it is, then maybe it's possible to work with the main guy that's going to be crazy. Uh, you know, that's another rock. Take the back half. And try to work instead of the front side where we're in our space and grades becoming. Uh, I mean, I think the committee would be willing to entertain uh, changes that that we felt would, uh, you know, solve or equal what we were, were looking for when we approved okay. the plan. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anybody? I don't just, I, 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 I want. Uh, not forget that an original plan that was not passed. I think we need to confirm that the original trees, they, they might not have just been picked up on this, this as built here. Um, make sure that those original trees that were supposed to remain are there. And then that plan needs to also include those mitigation structures as well that were okay. um, required. I think it was service very. <coughs> yeah. Open. My, I, you know, my most important concern is the drainage that that you know we want to keep that lake as clean as we can it's a really okay. nice lake and um you know the pressure of bu the buildings um it gets more and more dramatic every year mm -hmm. you know that i'm not trying to you know so we're just let it go. We're we're done well, here, right? Would you like a, uh, to ask for a, a plan to come back for review at your next meeting? Maybe. Steve, when do you want to have a plan for us? 
of what you're going to do. Yeah, the is that on the 10th or is that on the 1st? It's on the 10th. On the 10th. Yeah, the site visit day was the 1st. Um, you know, that gives that's three weeks to the next meeting. Um, hopefully two weeks. If you okay. try to get that two weeks, then give us an opportunity to look at that before the meeting. Could, could, yeah, Steve, could I ask the chair? Okay. Could I ask Steve for a comparison when you put the, the plan together, I would like a comparison of the original plan that was approved versus what you're proposing. So I can, I'm a, I'm a linear thinker. I want to see them side by side so I can, so, so I can evaluate them. That would be helpful to me. I appreciate that, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. No, no problem. Okay. Good night. Where to, Beck? Where do we go back up to uh, wetland decisions? Yeah, these are pretty quick. We do have Brandon on here for that um, those new business items, but I think we can go through these pretty quickly here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, wetland decisions number five, 400 Payne Street. This is the um, pilot um, truck stop redevelopment project. Uh, they have put in a request for a certificate of compliance, file number 300 1063. Um, once this was received, I went back and reviewed the conditions. Work has been done for some time, um, just so you're aware. We did have monitoring on the site as well. Uh, there's a few conditions that don't appear to have um, probably been met or they didn't um, give us any information about it. Condition number 46 was related to the fire line replacement within the pond and the BBW adjacent, uh, which required restoration monitoring. There are additional conditions related to revisions to the O&M plan that they need to look at. And then um, there was an area where there's a driveway to the hotel where they had put some riprap to kind of stabilize that slope at the time that was being held up by the tilt fence and there was a question it was near the pond how steep it was is that something that would be concerned when the slope fence came down so a couple things that they need to um, get back to us with that information they're working on that and we'll come back um, you know I already included this information to them that my recommendation would be because we had plantings and we need to review full site stabilization, there was also a lot of trash um, accumulation in the back near the truck parking that had Shocking. to be cleaned up. Oh, this was before your time, right? No, no. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, oh no. Okay. Oh, I'm just yeah, shocked yeah. that, yeah. So uh, um, the site needs to be reviewed without snow cover um, and, and during the growing season. We need to make sure all those, um, all right. those plantings were done and the other conditions. So my recommendation is to hold off on issuance at this time. Right. Okay. Anybody on. have a disagreement with that? Nope. No, I agree. You need a vote? No. I don't think yeah. so. I do. A vote? You want to vote? What do you want to do? Deny it? No, just vote to um, do it. But I think I don't think we did that well. Yeah, I don't think we need to action it. No. It's not right. a we'll public hearing. Right. All right. All right. Uh, next, number six, administrative decisions. Um, Minutes of the 127 meeting to approve. All right. Motion to approve the minutes. Um, Second. Discussion. Aaron, you said you had two changes? Um, there were two, two edits. Two <laughs> edits? <coughs> two edits. Uh, the word business was spelled wrong on one of the headings, and my favorite word, I'm never going to write again. That's it. <laughs> 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 I hate to, does not like me. I don't write my favorite word either, Aaron. That's that's all right. <laughs> so, you, any further discussion? Well, you also made a small revision. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. I made a small revision under number six, um, which was Hillside Drive. Instead of writing um, the commission discussed the applicant changing the peer um, not going through as a peer review Dave and I discussed just writing commission denied the request to the applicant okay I changed that for those changes any further discussion nope. all in favor of approving with those corrections Eric Aspar in favor Boy, Bishop in favor Ed Goodwin in favor Right. So we do have um, three new business items that recently came up. We do have Brendan Goodwin on here from the Trails Committee. 
Um, he has two items. We also have a new forest cutting plan, which I'll do afterwards. We'll let Brandon go since he's on here. Um, I'll start for the simpler of the discussions here. They do have a special use permit. Brandon, are you on there? You're on mute. Yeah, I was. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so yeah. Yep. Special use permit is for the ice sculpture contest. We're going to hold that next week. Uh, and sort of waiting to pull the trigger on it uh, until uh, we saw the weather. <laughs> and realizing it's starting tomorrow, it's going to be 40 uh, something degrees for the next few weeks. We pulled the trigger and people started putting nice sculptures out today. So we're asking for approval on that special permit uh, with short notice. I have no concerns. Motion to approve the special permit. Eric Kaspar. I second it. Or Bishop. Any discussion? I hope that Ipe sculpture in Brad's yard is going to stay in his yard. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I, I mean, the, the, the truck going by tonight to pick up a couple extras to make sure we have eight to ten of them out there. So uh, we should be okay. Okay. All in favor? Eric Kaspar in favor? Or Bishop in favor? Ed Goodwin in favor. All set, Brandy. All right, Brandon. So I'm just pulling up um, what you sent me about the flow trails um, for the commissioners to see. I'm going to share my screen here, but I'll let you um, go over that here. Perfect. So I can't really see what's up on the. On the uh, I'm, I'm doing that right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, uh, the pink trails on the upper right of the screen are the existing trails. Uh, so, and then the uh, dark pink on the south side of the bottom of the screen that I crossed off, uh, those were included in the original RFP and the vision coming in by. So we removed that and you know, 15, 20 percent of that trail to get up to the top of the field uh, as a community anyway. So we pulled that piece off. And the remaining sections of flow trail uh, that we have budget and you know and have awarded the bid are for the five colors that are the blue, yellow, purple, green, and orange. So that's about 1.5 miles of flow trail. Uh, if just to remind everybody, this project you know, will be in two or three phases. The end result have three and a half, uh, you know, three and a half or so miles of flow trail. And for those who aren't aware of what flow trail is, it, 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 it's actually what it is. The name is, you know, implies it is ride to the top of a hill, and then you can go run to the top, and you can run at speed or ride at speed down on a flowing trail. So you go into curves, you know, the corners are a little more banked, so you can get traction on them and keep some, you know, less about pedaling, more about a smooth ride or run down. And so um, funding we have would allow us east side of the property and then the plans that are that were approved originally uh you know the second phase the third phase will be the west side of the property so right now we're uh we're getting close uh you know once the spring starts we're hoping to be ready for construction within the 1.5 miles of trails that, that is approved uh there are two uh bridges that will be needed to be put in place they're on the green trail on the bottom of the page you can see them so those are two bridges that the trail committee will build once we've determined exactly where the trail is going to go uh, with with these trails during construction you know we'll be out there confirming uh exact routes as they're being built and we don't want to mark exactly where the crossings will be until we have a better feeling of of where the trail is just going to cross because obviously when you're doing 1.5 miles of trail, there'll be areas where you have to fly trails up and down and so on. So we don't know exactly where the exact place where this crossing is going to be. So that's the stuff that will come. You know, once the trails are close enough to the crossing, we know, then we'll do the work to come wise. So once we're done with, once the con comes, we'll do the 
We will then go to uh, Opecum, make sure they're aware and aligned, and then from there we're going to start building. Thank you. Yeah, so just, just so the other board members know, um, this property is the only large conservation property that's not in the care and health data plan of you guys. Uh, this is actually in the, the Florida select side. Um, because there's flatlands, obviously, um, you're going to need approval, as you mentioned, crossing. I would just note, too, that um, you have to be cautious to make sure that all work within jurisdiction um, needs to go in front of the, the commission. So, you know, 200 feet from where the crossing is, it would be the jurisdiction buffer zone. Um, make sure that they're reviewing things for work permits and things like that. Yeah, we will. Uh, I think, you know, we have, there is a, uh, on the pink trail down below, there crossing uh, one of the drainage pipes, I think, failed. So, and we were thinking that we would do that and the two bridges on the first NOI uh, once we once we firm up where those locations are. And we hear you that we're going to stay 200 feet from from the water. Brandon, do they need equipment to go um, up there? What kind of equipment do they need? Yeah, so it's, it's a narrow, they use a, a narrow specialized effort and build it, you know, it's supposed to be um, a very narrow trail. So it small extra through uh, and, and does a certain, I can't remember the number, but it's um, you know, a certain number of thousand feet a day that they get done. So it's not, not a fast pace, go a lot faster than by hand, especially when you get into the corners that they'll build. And that they'll be able to access everything off the, the Yes. Yeah. What's narrow, Brandon? How many feet? What's narrow? Yeah. I, well, the equipment will go through, and, and obviously some of these small excavators are probably six feet wide, uh, but we're trying to, the trail will be 20, 30 inches wide at most. Okay. So where they go, you know, will be a little wider. But when they're done, they'll be down to the track. Where is this parcel? Oh, so this is street from OSB. This is Main Street. All right, OSB, this is OSB's parking lot here. This is Stallion Hill Road that comes up. Okay. So this is where we just did the parking lot. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'll just add to, I don't have the Water Protection Act regs in front of me, but there is an exemption for certain width trails on conservation property i'll have to look it up so some of this might obviously not crossings and things like that aren't exempt so some of the the work might be exempt under the wetlands protection act anyway of course it's not under the local bylaw so. david yes sir what do you think oh you know what i think oh. i've been with the sucker from the beginning and brandon indicating that they need to have that equipment and for those of you who don't know the area, remember that at one time, the upper section of this property was a gigantic gravel. Oh, like over here? Right? Yeah. yeah. So is the bright pink being being discarded, Brandon? No. No, that's the existing track trail. So that, that yeah, will it's be bright pink on the bottom, right? So right yeah. North I'm not talking, the, I'm not talking, that, that weren't there, what? I can't see the point there. The one you have cross off, they're, they're disregarding it for now in the scope oh, of no, the no, RFP. I'm sorry, that's the, uh, Chamberlain's colorblind, so we never really know what colors he's using. That, um, <laughs> the, the, uh, that is not being discarded. That is something that we're going to, a lot of that can be built by the trail committee. That will be, um, right side of, the, of that property, that line, We'll build by hand uh, to get up to the top, and that will give us access to the rest of the trails. And then, uh, you know, depending on how we want to do phase two, um, whether we include the left side of that bright pink, you know, as part of phase two, or you know, have some, you know, more control, that will figure that out. Okay. Anybody else have any questions?
Roy says he wants you to build a trail in his backyard, Brandon. <laughs> All right. Any, that's it. We support the plan as submitted. Yeah. Motion to support the plan as submitted. Sure, I'll second that. Yeah. We support anything. Yeah. Every no discussion, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Mark Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. David Barnacle in favor. Yep. Just before um, Brandon leaves here too, um, as I bring this up to the commissioners, I did send out, um, there is a meeting tomorrow. Um, the Conway School is working on the updates for the, um, the master um, trail plan. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a Zoom meeting tomorrow at 6.30. Um, if you're interested, the link was on what I sent you, but it's also on the trails agenda, which is available on the town website. Okay. That's just a revamp for the not aware that is a revamp of the 10 year old master plan. So, new maps, uh, making sure that we're aligned in terms of you know, getting all the content status of the properties as of today in there and sort of just you know, refining everything as we go forward with the program. So it's the kind of a discussion tomorrow. They're looking for um, take All right. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Joe. Joey's got COVID. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't think so. All righty. Okay. Take care. Thanks, yep. Thanks. Bye. Or two. Well, Becky, did you have anything else on it? Is it report? I was going to continue. I was going to do the forest cutting plan and the land use map. Oh. Yeah. So we received the forest cutting plan yesterday. Um, I'm going to pull it up. So, Dave, I'm going to share my screen so we can go over this. Find it. So, so this is for Well State Park. I had um, previously spoke to someone, um, I'm just going to go to the map real quick, um, at DPR, so, so right, <coughs> 28 um, hazard trees being removed, uh, mine saying that these are dead trees, dead or dying, um, and they have some concerns. Um, DPR has a trail system down here. And um, they have a quite extensive trail system at Wells State Park, but right. they have a um, handicapped accessible trail um, that comes down through this area. This is kind of their main parking area down here that um, around it, they've identified all of these um, hazard trees. Um, I spoke to, like I said, I spoke to someone at DPR earlier on in the, the process when they were kind of reviewing options here. One of the things they were looking at and they were talking to the counter that DPR was doing a forest cutting plan to remove these. Um, if not, what kind of um, filings would they have to do with us? Um, at that time, I didn't know what the amount of tree removal would be, but if they were hazard or dead trees along the trail, if they were just going into cut, they probably could be in our space. Um, you know, just say they're within riverfront area or whatnot. So they've, I'll just read it to you. This is a hazard tree removal project to be conducted by DPR. Sawyer, Sawyers, I guess that's how you say that maybe. Um, Sawyers. Sawyers. They will hand fell marked hazard trees, which were the orange dots on here, away from flagged and mapped wetland resource areas. There will be no heavy equipment used to access, cut, or otherwise remove the felled trees. Wetlands and filter strips are flagged in blue and indicate that trees should be felled away from the flagging. There will be no harvesting in wetlands and greater than 50% of the basal area in the sand one will be retained. Tops will be locked according to SLAC law regulations. There are 128 trees marked for removal, the majority being mixed oak and red pine that have died from gypsy moss and the red pine scale infestations. infestation. Being non-commercial, a summary of the species to be filled by size, classes, and speed with the filing, um, which there is a table in there. So um, it's 0.7 acres total of area that they've estimated. 
was they'll be cutting the trees. Um, the volume of board feet is 20.49 and the volume of cords is 0.85. Um, so like I said, the, the, the reason for this, um, from my understanding, is um, that these are, these are hazard trees on this handicap accessible trail on the perimeter of it. So um, like I said, we received this yesterday. It is within um, the priority habitat for state listed species. So they are aware that they'll have to file that. I mean, they file it currently with us, DCR, and then the Natural Heritage Program will provide the DCR on that. How do they, I don't have any problem with it, but how do they measure that it's 1.7 acres? 0.7 acres? Okay. 0.7 acres. How do you, how do you another, calculate it? Yeah, I know. She's got this little image here, which kind of, she must have gps around the areas of the tree stands. Maybe there's more, you know, just looking at where the, the, okay. the dots are here, see? It's like kind of so they give it an area and then they... Yeah, I think that's how she, she calculated the harvest. I don't area. think it's a calculation they should be doing. I mean, the length of trail would be. Yeah. Maybe the state asked for that, so. Okay. Yeah, maybe it does. Anybody else have any questions? Nope. David, any questions? All in favor of approving it? Eric Gaspar in favor. Lord Bishop in favor. Ed Gunner in favor. David, you in favor of approving it? Yeah. Oh, and, and just so you're aware, because of the, the size of this um, forest cutting plan, it doesn't have to go to the Board of Selectmen under the normal processes. So I went back and kind of reviewed what the Board of Selectmen requirements are. A uh, selective harvest would be uh, four or more acres, and a clear cut would be two acres. So they don't have to. Okay. But it encompasses more than four acres. Well, the, the, the land without yeah. that harvest, but, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, a few quick things on my end. Um, just to let you know, um, I sat in on um, Betterment. I did put a request in for Betterment. I think I talked about this before for dog waste stations at our trailheads. Um, so we were approved. It'll go to town meeting now. I think it was about twenty five hundred dollars for eight dog waste stations. It was a, a a request I put in with the rec committee. One being to the town common, which is under their care and custody, so that way um, we can start managing some of that dog waste out there. You know. Signage, there's bags, there's a receptacle, you know, put them in and hopefully people will use them. So I also requested um, a good amount of receptacle bags and dog waste bags to get us through the first year or maybe even longer how we use them. Um, DPW did speak to them. They did um, offer to install them so we didn't have to put any extra cost situation. And then um, also um, assist us with um, Cleaning those since they do go around and get the trash out back in. Okay. I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, so they'll be at the parking lots for the trailheads. So um, I did put in for uh, seven for us. So uh, Riverlands each led my parking lot, Pines, um, Long Pond, because they are looking to do some um, trails up there, and they recently kind of pushed back that gate we talked about to expand parking. Plimpton, and then um, on off of Stallion Hill on the, um, not off Stallion Hill, off of Holland Road, where the Grand Trunk goes into mm -hmm. Brimfield, at yep. that one as well. So it covers our um, conservation property. I believe that covers, I didn't bring my scope with me, 75? Oh, I did 75 far, far road too, because we're going to be putting the what does a dog no. waste station look like? Oh, I can show you. Want to see? Oh, I shouldn't have asked the question, well, should I? It's like it's a a little I'm going to look yeah. it up when I get home. It's the place where you pull a bag out of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, this well, was there, there were actually like, many choices. You oh, got yeah. to choose. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, right. It, it, 
most Sorry, important work of the day. Yeah. yeah. It's got a thing where you can get the bags, and this one we actually got a. It's got a, a metal trash container on it, so that way it's not plastic; it's gonna break with a with a cover that you put a bag in. I will say, as a frequent user of our trail systems, it is a large problem. Yeah. People use. I mean, I. I'm really hopeful that they'll utilize these stations and tools to clear up our these bags around. Yeah. David, should we put some facial recognition camera trail cameras out there so we can uh, send it to Chief Dessert to uh, track down the offenders? Six or seven of them will be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what else? Uh, just a couple other things. Just let you know, after our last hearing, I did speak to Chris Wagner. He was the representative from DHP for the um, ANRAD that we had on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, he had reached out to, to ask, um, you know, if, if we had that on our agenda. Um, when they had received our detailed agenda, I believe, before the meeting, they reached out to the applicant to see how they wanted them to proceed. And they hadn't heard back. They weren't authorized to come on the meeting, so they didn't, they were not aware of it. So just wanted to let you know that. And um, another thing um, Ed had brought up before was um, associate members for the commission. Uh, we were able to find paperwork from the governor that did approve um, the Conservation Commission having two associate members, um, but it appeared that you can't seem to track down that it, there's a process here in town that needs to happen. It needs to go to town meeting also for approval. It doesn't appear that that happened. Um, and then it also appears that it would need to be added. In well, it's timely. If we want to do it, they're reviewing the charter reviewing as the charter, we speak. Right. Yep. So I didn't know how if you guys wanted to discuss that, how you want me to proceed. Um, it sounds like it would have to go to town meeting as well. Well, when they finish with the charter, it has to go to town meeting anyway. So if you get it written in now, uh, it'll just automatically go with the charter item. I think his reasoning is sound. Yeah, no, that sounds good to me. I mean, yeah. I can, um, do you want me to bring that to the TA? Becky, I think you're sure. on our website. Yeah. You just provide people. Yeah, I don't know the TA. But we could probably just email Bill Hegarty and his group. Well, I think, yes. the, I think the TA had some concern that it hadn't gone to town meeting yet. I understand, but I, I can double check oh. on that and say, hey, well, can it just go to town meeting as part of the charter review process? But Hagerty can also shepherd it. Okay, we'll work on that. Yep. Uh, Becky? Yes? As a political move, it might be wise to inform or talk with the sales committee relative to the putting of Doggy bag up. They talk with us about everything even on the riverlands where we don't have president control. I think that it would be politically correct with them relative to something that we're going to be putting at the trailheads of all of your trails. But who with the trails committee? Yes. Um well, I mean I've been discussing it with Tom Chamberlain, so I don't thought maybe he was Aware, uh, therefore the trails committee would be aware. That's a, sometimes that's a bag and book materials that will come out. Okay. I will let Brandon know. Um, and also, just to let you know, I did reach out to Opacum Land Trust on that because they do hold the CRs on a lot of these properties and they didn't have any concerns with, with putting those in. I probably have to officially notify them or something, but. All right, I will, I will make sure he's aware. Um, just one other thing, um, I have been trying to follow up with the um, property owner of the 102 South Shore Drive, that's the one with the um, ravine in the back after the stormwater pipe having some issues back there, and I haven't heard from him recently. So I'd ask him to, you know, with all the information that we had kind of put together and insight he was getting from engineers, um, he had some kind of concern with, you know, doing more out there beyond 
what he thought was necessary for him to do and cost associated engineers or not. And I said, well, at this point, if that's, you know, how you feel, I think that we've gotten a lot of useful information from people, work with your contractor and put a plan together and come back to the commission with that, because that does need to get addressed um, sooner than later. And there's some kind of ongoing issues going out there. Um, the last time I did reach out to him, I have not heard back. Okay. So if you need to follow up, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, as for the names that are coming, um, Good. Good. Well, Eric's been out there. He knows what it looks like out there. Eric, what do you think? I don't think it's going to hurt. Yeah. To come? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he did bring it to our attention and that it was an issue, and I know he's right. concerned about it as well or whatnot. Mm -hmm. We just want to. Also, make sure we're protecting the resource area from any additional impact. Right, so, right. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. Okay. I have a question for board, or specifically for Mac. And I, 20 has been in a complete uproar for about almost a year now of a wetland issue, and yet the Conservation Commission has not been aware of any of the things that the Department of Transportation are doing relative to this wetland issue, and I was wondering why we're not part of the loop information-wise, so that when the public comes to us and says, what the hell are you guys doing out there with all your pipes and stuff, we can say, well, um, this is the Department of Transportation problem, as you call them. Yeah, I mean, we have discussed that before, and I mean, I have been out there with them too. Um, I was notified from MassDOT that this was a special bridge project, um, which didn't apply to particular permitting. Um, I mean, I know I have the paperwork somewhere in the office when they notified me probably like three years ago at this point. Uh, but I have been involved in that, and we have discussed that. I have brought that yeah, up. Yeah, we discussed it before this meeting. Yeah. But they have had they have had hiccups, and maybe I should have been giving you some updates. But they had some hiccups out there um, in regards to um, the rock blasting that they had to do. The you know the engineer who did the initial testing out there said it was a certain type of rock. I don't want to misquote, and you know it's, whatever it was was much harder, so it took a little much longer. They had some contamination issues in their stockpiling area that they had to deal with. Um, and then there's just there's a lot of moving parts to that project with sewer lines, water lines, um, bypassing the stream um, during different phases because they have to, you know, move the stream from through the stone arch culvert under the road and it goes under the um, whatever the Yankee Peddler building, and then it takes like a 90 degree angle and goes out. So they've actually are rebuilding the culvert underneath. Um, so that way it goes underneath and stays in Route 20 and then goes out in between the two buildings. So they kind of started from the, the, the end point of the new crossing um, and did that work, but they had to work um, along the side of the road to remove all those water lines and sewer lines, et cetera. There's just a whole bunch of things um, in different phases, and they've been, um, they were delayed, so they're going to be a little bit longer than originally anticipated. Right, there's a new culvert going in there because the other one's about to fail and then there'll be no Route 20. So. <laughs> that would seem like a bad no, situation. There's no qu Becky, that was a good job of defending something that is fairly undefensible. Yeah. They've been standing in the middle of the road for well over a year. Yeah. And they have more equipment there than, uh, than they used on the big dig. I know. I've it's seen like, them moving around. Jersey <laughs> barriers were moved. And we just signed Roy's um, mowing form. That's all. Why do I have to sign it? I don't know. It says in the bottom board member signature. So okay. That you received it. So. That's the first, Roy. They must not trust you. 
<laughs> I've never That's signed one of these way. before. <laughs> CPC doesn't have an update. Okay. <laughs> no uh, meeting. Yeah. Lakes does not have an update. However, I am on the town administrator search committee, and uh, one of the original conversations was not to include the conservation agent as the as one of the interviewees for a department head, uh, and I made sure that uh, Becky was uh, put as part of the interviewee uh, uh, topics. For our consultant, so I believe that happened yesterday, which is which is good. I wanted to make sure that we had some input f to our to our consultant. So as we are searching for the appropriate person, conservation is is taken into consideration. Good, that's good. Thank you. Anything else, Beck? We heard a lot from trails already. I yeah, I think we got the trails update. <laughs> yeah, that's already, a good. So. I mean, we you've probably heard this. But in um, in 2021, 70,000 people walked our trails. Oh, that's impressive. a lot of oh, Well, let me put it this way. It could have been just one guy that went by the counter, but uh, but he'd have to have done it 70,000 times. <laughs> Can I just add one, one bit of old business? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, go ahead. Um, so uh, Aaron, uh, well, uh, Becky put together a letter to issue to Representative Smola and Senator Fatman regarding our ongoing uh, concern about 508 International. Uh, Aaron submitted it to, him last, uh, to uh, them last week. I got correspondence back from Representative Smola directly and also uh, Senator Fatman's um, uh, chief of staff that they will be coordinating efforts to discuss with MEPA and the commissioner uh, why there hasn't been any action out of MEPA and out of the commissioner's office uh, on this on this project. So uh, they've committed to get back to me. That was six days ago, Aaron, I believe. So uh, I don't I don't think uh, we, we're in uh, outside of a reasonable timeline to get get back. I don't know what the timeline is going to be, but uh, hopefully I will get some correspondence back by our meeting on the tenth. Oh, and Becky won't be around, so there'll be no crazy stuff happening this week. It'll be very calm and quiet. <laughs> I thought we had some really crazy stuff planned. No, no. <laughs> but that's all I have. Becky's going to call all of her old friends oh. the day before she leaves, tell them that oh, they have yeah, a br yeah. problem. Stir up some trouble for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all, guys. That's it. And we don't have anybody. Oh, jeez. Uh, well, I'll, I'll take. I did Stephen's opening remark, so I'll close. That's it a good well. idea. <laughs> motion, a motion to, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. All right. David.